this leads maybe pursuing various undergraduate or graduate university degrees but have good foundational knowledge of software development concepts for more information you can visit or apply in the link provided a few reminders before we start make sure that your microphone is off while someone is presenting asking questions after the discussion is highly encouraged we will provide you with a slide and qr code for your questions very well now let's start this event for our first speaker she is joanna camille butil she's the one of the pioneering organizer of java start she's currently a ui ux designer at mvp.dev a microsoft learn student ambassador a mentor and a form lead former lead at gdsc cec <laughs> hello everyone um i'm joanna and i am one of the pioneering chapter as an organizer for um, java start um, it was held last March 19, 2022, just this year, together with um, GDSC from Ateneo de Zamboanga University and Batanga State University. And um, today, I welcome you all for the season two, and I hope that you will learn best from our Java hands-on speaker that we have prepared for you. And um, I'm also grateful for our GDSC lead, um, John Stewart. Unfortunately, he can't be here today, but um, with you guys here, uh, we are very grateful for your presence. And um, for this batch, um, John Stewart has actually um, took an initiative to conduct this crash course in Java for the second time around, and which we strongly believe as a chapter that this is very helpful as a foundation for, um, uh, especially for students in lower years. So regardless of um, which um, university or school are you, we welcome you all in this event. And we hope that um, in this Java programming language, um, since it is one of the languages that um, Google used for their backend, especially in networking. Fun fact, um, we are so glad as local chapter, again, to conduct this um, while also setting up a goal where we wanted to offer you more with events that can make you learn as a student or even as an expert. So if you're here, um, to have a foundation for Java or just a refreshment since you wanted to um, learn Java again regarding its basic fundamentals um, where we are ready and we are so proud to um, conduct this event. So again, welcome and may you enjoy this event and hopefully be more interested with GDSE community. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and effort to be with us here today, Ms. Joanna. And now for the most important session in our event today, meet our speaker, Mr. Maurice Vincent Mijos. He's the Google Developer Student Club CC Game Development Lead, Senior Programmer, former intern at Marv's Digital Software Solutions, and Lead Game Developer, Graphic Artist, Capstone Project Game Development Pioneers at Crystal College with the fallout. Our very own Mr. Maurice Vincent, take it over. Uh, good morning, sa tanan, no? um, And for those who don't know me yet, I'm Maurice Vincent Mejos, uh, a fresh graduate of Crystal College. So as you can see sa tong slide, yeah, uh, I'm also a member or a former member of Google, uh, Google Developer Student Club uh, in our school uh, as the game development lead. Uh, senior uh, programmer, and I was also the one, or I'm also one of those pioneering um, uh, students who made uh, game development within our school. So as of the moment, um, I'm still unemployed, but uh, I have been applying to many other companies na involving especially Java uh, programming languages. So um, 
right now uh can i share my screen please okay thank you for a while lang, ha? Uh, can you please confirm if you can see my uh, screen share? Okay. <clears throat> okay, see. Is it clear ba or is it um okay na siya? Okay, see. So let's start off with the um, title. No? It's uh, Java Start. It's actually 2.0 since this is the second version in which uh, I followed the footsteps of <laughs> Miss Joanna Butin. So in this topic, we're going to talk about the basics of um, Java programming. So let's proceed with the table of, uh, of contents that we have here. So we will be talking about uh, a small overview or a simple introduction of what Java programming is. Uh, data types, no? uh, user input, we'll be talking about basic operators, uh, control statements such as mga if, uh, if else, mga if, and, uh, if else, if ladder, uh, instead if, and so on and so forth. Uh, we will also be talking about 2D arrays or what we call multidimensional arrays. And then we'll be talking about nested for loops, uh, for each loop as well, as well as nested for each loop, okay? And then we will be talking about methods, uh, functions on how to call methods, how to access methods, uh, arguments, and parameters within those methods. And lastly, the variable scoping. Since can variable scoping, it's very important to know uh, which variables are um, pwede ni mo ma-access within those code of blocks or within the class mismo or within that method itself. So without further ado, let's proceed with our uh, introduction. So first we have um, uh, Java is one of the most popular and widely used programming language and is invented by my uncle, no? <laughs> James Gosling. And then this application, I mean, the application of Java is most likely used as server-side language for most back-end development projects. Uh, this includes uh, involving date, uh, big data and even Android developments. And it's also used to build application for wide range such as uh, web developments, mga desktops and servers and so on by the use of Java, uh, Java applications. Now, let's go over to the data types. So we have two types, uh, we have two data types. No, uh, I'm not gonna explain much on what is primitive and non-primitive, but to give you a small understanding of, of what primitive is, those are, uh, code blocks in which they are capable of data manipulation. So example, Anna, is Boolean, car, um, byte, short, int, long. Uh, we have the uh, floating points, which is float and double. So for the non-primitives, uh, we have string, array. There are actually a lot, no? Mga array list, link list, and so on. We can even use dictionaries if we wanted to. Pero for this event, we will only be talking about uh, string and array, since mo uh, most commonly used for the basics of Java. Uh, by the way, guys, if you think uh, medyo pas -pas ako, please tell me ha, para atong hinayan. And then here, let's talk about the, um, the primitive data types. So first off, we have Boolean. So this data type uh, is used uh, for simple flags to, that tracks true or false conditions. In other words, Boolean always gives a value of either false or true. More again, siya. And then the second one, we have car. No? Uh, it is used to store characters. Uh, later on, Dai, we will uh, declare all these uh, variables uh, after, I, uh, after I explain this plan. data types. So we have the integral val uh, data types, which is byte, short, int, and long. So in most cases, no, uh, for the basic uh, programming in Java, we will most likely use int yod. Byte short and long are rarely used. Na na siya. It's because uh, for me personally, ang, ang, va, uh, ang range, ang value range ng int is enough to use sa mga basic programming in Java. But to give you an overview of it, uh, kanin byte, 
it has 8 bit of memory, uh, the size of its memory. So I'm not going to explain much on what are these bits all about now as uh, you will go through it, um, I think, on your second year. Sa mga crystal ila, no? And, um, but it's, the, it's the, the memory size of that data type mismo. But the differences lang ani nila is their value range, which is sa byte, we have negative 1 to 8, sorry. We have negative 1 to 8 to 1 to 7. Sa short, we have negative 32,000 and so on. And then sa int, we have negative 2 million and so on. As for long, we also have negative uh, 9 zillion. Wait. Basta, yan na siya nga number. 9 trillion, sorry. And then to the positive of number. Yan siya. And then the next data type that we have here is float. So muna siya mga gitawag na to uh, floating points. Or I mean floating uh, data types uh, for floating numbers. So float deals with float, uh, floating point numbers. So example and eight is uh, decimal places. Let's say for example two, three, four point five, uh, as well as double. It's also deal. It also deals with floating point numbers. So another example there, which is twelve point three. Now the difference anin duha is um, for the float uh, data type, we have a letter F or the character F after the value, which signifies that this value refers to a float. Uh, data type. Okay, if wala na siya F, diha, if there's no letter F in there, then it will read as a double value. Okay, it, it will read as a double data type. Now, other than that, ang difference nila duha is ang float. The precision sa float is only up to 7 decimal places, whereas ang double, it can take up to 15 decimal places. So, muna ang difference nila duha. Now, let's go over to our IDE. No, so I have here, um, sorry, I have here NetBeans. Claro ba or is it small? How about this one? Please confirm that kung claro ba siya. Yung may pa. Ana, that one. Okay. So again, we have uh, Boolean. So let's say, for example, Boolean. Like that. Uh, sorry. All right. Now, to give you um, a, buy, uh, a, tip, uh, a short tip lang, no? Sa inyo, ha? Always make a identifier concise. When we say concise, it's uh, short as possible, but understandable when you read it. So, for example, we have an identifier here which is is connected. By the way, an identifier is simply um, the variable name. So this one is a variable. Now, a variable holds a value, no, and a variable always has a data type. So here, not a data type, which is boolean, identifier, and the value. Although it's not all the time that you can. Uh, you need to um, specify a value right away. You can also say uh, boolean is uh, access, let's say. You can also say that one, which means nga, later on, pwede ni mo siyang gamitin nga, uh, variable. Next one is we have, um, what was that? Character. We have character. Let's say, for example, you are uh, a, a high school student in which uh, you have sections in your school, diba? So let's say section. For the character, in order to know that it is a character data type, you have to use a single code like this and put a or whatever letter you want to, uh, to put as a value. Now, take note that in Java, it is case sensitive. So when we say capital A, the value of section is capital A. When we say small a, the value of section is, is small letter A. Okay? So, dapat uh, aware ta na, na Java is a case-sensitive uh, program. Okay? Next is we have the, uh, let me see again. Oh, yeah. The integral uh, data types. So, we have byte, byte num. We have um, short num. In this case, now as you can see, nag error siya. It's because if we're going to hover it sa to ang variable, 
it's going to say na um, variable name is already defined or which means na duplicate na ni siyang variable or variable name. So when making variables in Java, it has to be unique. Okay? Tapat wala siya kapareha. So in this case, let's say um, num1. No, actually, I, I usually do like this one. I don't like um, short yung mga identifiers. So we have int, say third number. And we have um, long, which is the fourth number. Okay. Now this one, so like I said earlier, uh, what we use commonly yod is ang int. No? The rest, byte, short, long, um, it's rarely used yod, no, in Java programming. So we can disregard for the byte, short, and long, and we'll focus on int. So in int, it's either you can uh, declare it without values yet and use it later on in your program, or you can uh, declare a value already. So let's say, for example, uh, int zero, or you can say negative something, diba? As long as it's within the range nga akong ipakita earlier, which is negative two million and so on and so forth. I mean, negative two billion and so on and so forth. Ano siya. And then, uh, let's say negative, I would just say five, something like that. And then we have float. Okay. Again, uh, deals with floating point numbers. So float, um, let's say decimal number. Um, let's give a value of 32.3. So again, like I said earlier, if um, value ni, fo, uh, ni float has no letter F after the number, it will read as a double data type. So we need to put F all the time Milana, when it comes to the data type of float. Now, next one is double. Um, 15.6. So see, you can see the difference nga. Uh, so float point yod, always remember to put letter F after your number. Para may baw ano siya, nga this value is a float data type. Okay. So next is we have what we call non-primitive data types. So like I said also earlier, is we will uh, there are a lot of non-primitive data types that includes classes, interfaces, uh, linked list, array list, and so on and so forth. But for the basics, we will only be talking about the string and the array. Now, let's go over with string. What's the string? String holds a set of text or characters. No? So it could be a word, a sentence, a phrase, or even a number. A number can, a number can be set or it can be called a character when it comes to string. Okay, let's try to declare it in our ID. Say string, okay, let's say string name. Uh, when you are declaring string variables, no, you are going to use two double quotes. I mean, two double quotes, sorry. You're going to use double quotes no, um, in order to declare your text or set, or set of characters. So let's say, for example, Ken, like that. Or, sa aong ingon ganina, Numbers can also be called characters. As long as it's inside this double quote, no, mahimo na siyang text. Okay? So the difference between na as a double quote and outside of the double quote is, say for example, int, this is a value. Whereas for the string, it's no longer a value, it became a content. A content or a text or how should I say this? Um, basta, a content. Mano siya ang uh, pinaka the best word that we can use for it. Now, next one is um, how to, let's say, print it out. No, There are two ways in order to print something sa tong program. It's either system, system out that print, like that. And we can call our variable name like this, or we can go for system.out.print line. 
Now, the difference between system.out.print and print line is ang kanin print line, it's going to uh, end that line and will proceed to another line. So, para makita na ito ni siya, uh, let's say for example, um, hmm, let's try to run this one. See? Mm-hmm. Let's try to run this one. So as you can see, since wala ta nagamit of print line, even though even though these two lines of codes are not uh, in line or one line, no, makita na to siya nga um, nagsumpay sila nando ha. So one, two, three. Since our name is uh, the, the the content of our or the string that we have in our name variable is one two uh, one three two plus the number which is five. Whereas kung ako niyang e line dre, there, de ba? Naka next line na siya. Okay. Also, when it comes to string, we can also make concatenation. So what is concatenation? Concatenation is when you are going to um, connect, let's say for example, you have a string and then you have a variable name, pwede ni mo na siya itapo in one um, line of code. What do I mean by that? Let's say for example, I have a name of Maris. And here, let's say that we're going to print out um, hello using the plus sign and then we're going to call our variable name and two just okay. So when we run this one, so you can see. Oh no, wait. Atong batang space ne. There. This is an example of concatenation. You have a string nga uh, input ni mo val uh, manually within our uh, print line plus the variable in another string. Okay, so pwede na siya. You can even use um, concatenation with um, operators later on. Ito na siya ipakita. Let's say, for example, you are adding two numbers. You can do that one. Okay. Now, let's go over with the array. Now, an array is a set of um, elements no, of the same data type as a collection. So, um, think of it as a collection lang of the same data type. Nga, let's say, for example, we have a string, uh, let's say, employee names. Okay. Like this. So, yung anion siya pag declare. Equals new. Sorry. Equals new. Uh, string. Wait. Uh, yeah. The size. So, pwede ni mo siya i-declare as like this or you can declare it with values already. So, string employee names. Let's remove the other ones along. And then we're going to say that um, we have and tapos um Pwede said nga, oh, do I say this? Mm, add, sabi, sige, yun sa nga name lang. That, um, Lord. So, pwede ni siya. You can declare it with values already or same sa ganina nga, you can declare it without values later on. So, here, we, ha we already have a an array, a string array to be exact, with an identifier of employee names. Now, how do we access the array? Or how do we read and write an array? So let's say, for example, that we wanted to, uh, to, to get the value or we wanted to get the name Ken. Okay? We have what we call index and elements. So let's say, for example, this array now. Um, 
yeah, let's make this a one line na lang para makita natin. So in this example, we have a string array in which we have three elements inside the array. Kanisha, mo niya gitawag elements. The value of that certain array. So element, this is the first element, the second element, the third element, and so on and so forth. Now we have what we call indexes, like I said earlier. So let's say, for example, this is zero, one, and two. So our array length, no, ang length sa tong array is currently three. But when it comes to indexes, it always starts with zero. So si Kent has an index of zero. Joshua has an index of one. Lord has an index of two. You have to keep that in mind. Okay, magamit na to ng index later when we are going to read and write a value within an array. Okay. So how do we um, read an element of that array? So all you got to do is uh, call the identifier, employee names, names, and then uh, square brackets. And then you are going to call the index or you're going to put the index that you want that value uh, or the, the, the value that you want to get. So let's say, for example, this. So kung ato ni siyang tanawan, we should get a value of, or we should get the name N. Ano siya dapat. So let's try putting this sa ito ang print. By the way, ang shortcut when you are going to um, write system out that print is you can go S out and just press tab. It will make a print line. So in that case, let's call employee names zero. So dapat ang mugawas na to dire is Ken. Run file. So we have Ken. So if we say two, since this is zero, one, and two, we should have a result of Lord. Okay, so gets that? Yes, that's what we call indexing. Yeah, sakto. Okay, now, how do we write, no? Or um, how do we reassign a new value to a certain element or a certain index? It's just the same thing. You're going to call the identifier. Then you're going to put which index you, you want to write. So let's say, for example, zero. And then input or give your new value. Let's say, for example, look. So when we print this employee, this uh, index, no longer going to be Kent, but it's, it's now going to be look there. Diba? Pero kung before, before ang, ang pag write na to, ni um, index zero, we have Kent. Now, you also have to take in mind or take in, uh, you have also, you also need to know that in Java, uh, the program or the Java, the Java program will run in an order manner from top to bottom. So whatever line of code that is on top of something, mona si una niyang iran before running the one below him or below that line of code. So yung na ang logic ni Java. So for that, uh, let's go over with um, declaring array without values yet. No, so let's say for example, string employee names, we have new string, and then we're going to give it a size. So let's say for example, let's give it a size of five lang. No? So this means that our array has a size of five. So it can store up to five elements lang. So same thing. Um, pwede ka nga, you're going to say employees, uh, employee name, name zero. Equals to ten. We can say one is equals to look, and so on and so forth. But the thing here is, it's kind of hassle that you are going to uh, input names, yah, uh, tagsa tagsa on mo through a line of code. In that case, dili mo sulod ang what we call 
uh, user input. Okay? So in Java, we have built-in packages. There are a lot of built-in packages, to be honest. No? But for this one, we are going to use the very common or the most common package that we are going to use when we are making Java programs. So to understand this one, built-in packages no, uh, are pre-written classes to help the programmers manage input, database, and many others. And in order to import packages, we have two kinds of importing. No? We have importing specific package in which we are going to get the package name and then the class. And then the second one is importing the whole package using the asterisk, which means all. So let's give it an example. So you are going to import classes before the class, no? Before the class in a block, this one. So let's say, for example, that we are going to import uh, Java Util Scanner. By the way, ang Java Util Scanner, no? Uh, is a pre-written class nga mo handle inputs from the user. So let's say import and then the package name, which is java.util. So this is the package name. And then we can say all. We can say like this. So it means that we are importing all the classes inside the Java uh, util na package. But since we want it to be specific lang, since we're only going to use only one class or only one package, then we're going to use scanner. Okay. So I'm not going to talk about any other packages. You can search it up na lang. Okay. Daghan yun na siya with different uh, functions and uses. Now, um, in this case, since we don't have a value yet sa tong string, no? sa tong array, instead of putting it like this, nga set of line of codes in order to input a value inside our um, array, we're just going to ask the user na lang, di ba? for an input. So how to do that? Let's remove everything else from here. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to say scanner plus your identifier, let's say user input, is equals to new scanner, and we're going to get the source. And our source is system system that in. So mana siya tong source. Now there are a lot of functions within scanner. No, uh, example of that is my next line, next in, next double, next float, and so on. Now you can use that one by simply making a variable first in which it will hold a value for us, okay? So let's say, for example, um, uh, string name, since we're going to get the employee names. So let's just say string name. And then we're going to call the variable name. And then um, it's equals to user input that next. That's the line. Let's just say there. So this means that we are going to get a string data type as a user input, and we're going to store it in our variable nga name, which is also a string variable. So this is a string data type. Okay. Now, if we are going to run this, this um, program, you are now able to type in whatever it is that you want to type in. Sa tong program. So let's say um, Morris. Or nothing happens. It's because uh, wala mo na to siya gi-sood sa tong array or we're not um, calling the variable name itself. So let's say for example, um, we are going to ask the user for their name. Diba? So let's say else out. And then we're going to say enter your name. Okay. By the way, if you it's it's a common practice to remove the line or the print line, no, uh, when you are asking a user input, so that the input will be beside sa kaning imuhang string or sa imuhang uh, print na enter your name. So let's give it a try. 
So as you can see, we have enter your name plus you're going to input this time. So let's say Morris. So that's it. And now we can check if kaning nga atong nga nga string or kaning nga name is stored inside our string variable nga name. Let's check this out by saying or by calling the variable itself. Diba? So there it is. Muni ang ato ang variable nga name. So na-store ang ato ang uh, user input using this next line. Now, how do we store it inside our array? No? It's just the same thing. Japan, atong una. We can say that um, let's move this here. Okay. So you can say that um, employee means index of zero is equals to name. Simple as that. So if we are going to um, check it out, kung nasud bigit siya sa tong array, we're going to say name. Um, so name plus Let's make a concatenation is inside the array. Something like this now. Just for an example. Okay, so let's say Morris. As you can see, uh, wait, let's do it again. As you can see, we have uh, a user input, which is Morris, which is stored into our name variable. No? And then, ato siyang check if this variables is or is already inside our employ uh, our employing uh, array it's because gi right agi right na to siya no we place the name variable inside our array so that's an example of user input and how to um read those um how do you say this um array or collections so after that one we're going to go over with our basic operators okay so our basic operators we have actually we have eight operators in java but i'm going to show you the four basic ones lang which we will usually use good in making java programs so we have here unary operators and summoning unary operators this is the increment and decrement so what is increment increment is it's most likely used uh, in integral data types such as int, um, uh, byte, short, and so on and so forth. Diba? So when we say increment, it's going to add one onto that value. So decrement is the opposite of it. So it's going to subtract one from its value. So let's say, for example, I have an int of, let's say, num lang is equals to one. Increment is something like this. You're going to call the variable name and then you're going to add plus plus and that is what we call increment. So instead of having a value of one, no, it's going to be two. So I'll print. Uh, print num. Let's remove the rest along for now, huh? So, diba, we have a result of 2 since nag-increment man ta ni variable ng num. Now, same thing. Decrement. No? So, instead of having 1, we will have a value of 0. Okay? Now, postfix it means in an ane. Okay? The, the operator or the plus plus or the minus minus is after the variable name. Whereas, ang prefix you can also make it something like this, plus num num or minus num num. Okay. For a while lang ha, for a while. Okay, sorry. So next operators is we have arithmetic operators. So we have two categories within arithmetic operators. We have multiplicative and additive. So on summoning uh, multiplicative, 
these are um, asterisk for multiplication, slash for division, and we have modulo for getting the remainder. Okay, and we have additive, which is the plus sign for sum in or addition, and we have minus for subtraction. And then the next one we have is relational operators. So we have comparison. So this is um, less than, uh, equal to, uh, no, less than or greater than, or less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, something like that. And then we have equality, which is equals to or not equal to. Okay, I'm going to share this with you guys later on. And then lastly, we have logical operators, which is N or or not. Okay, so kaning logical operators, we will, or I will show it to you later on when we go over with if-else statements. Okay, it is applicable in conditioning. No? So let's go with the... Multiplicative and the additive, which is the arithmetic um, operators. So let's say, for example, we have two numbers. Num one and num two. So num one and num two. Num two is equals to five. Num one is equals to, let's say, three. In that case, no, we have what we call uh, multiplication. Sa, ito ta sa multiplicative first, okay? Multiplication. So you can say num1 times using the asterisk sign times num2. Diba? Ingana, ingana ang pag multiply, multiply sa ito ang numbers. So if ato ni siyang isuod sa print na ito, okay, what is 3 times 5? So that should be 15, diba? So when we run that, we have a result of 15. So it's just the same thing, uh, div division. We can do division, diba? Oh no, itong i-butang ni ko ka number first. Okay, that one. So we get one. Now, sa itong elementary uh, mathematics, we know that dividing 5 by 3 is... Not just a remainder. So we can get the remainder by using our modulo operator sign. So when we for that, let's say uh, num2 modulo using percentage sign one. So we will get a remainder of two, which is sakto. Diba? Next is we have, uh, let's call this modulo. Modulo or modulus, okay. And then we have division. This one is multiplication. So the next one we have here is addition. So if, uh, we can say num2 plus num1, we will get a value of eight. And then for the subtraction, we say num2 minus num1. So we will have a value of 2. So then it's going run. Okay, so we have num2 times num1 is 15. Num2 divided by 3, or 5 divided by 3 is 1 with the remainder of 2 using this modulo, diba? Right? And then we have addition. Uh, 5 plus 3 is equals to 8, and then 5 minus 2 is equals to, uh, 5 minus 3 is equals to 2. So it's just simple, it's just that simple. Okay. Now for the comparison, uh, as well as the equality, and then and or and not, ato na siya na to explain sa if else statement, since these operators uh, apply when we are making condition statements. No. So let's proceed with our control statements. So on some of control statements, these are straight statements that are used to control the flow of Java code. So like I said earlier, so Java, uh, the program is going to run from top to bottom. So whatever um, line of code, codes or block of codes that you have 
placed on top of something, magitoy una niyang iran. But since we have control statements, we can change or manipulate the flow of our Java execution or the, 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 the program that we have. So we have three types of control statements. First is we have decision-making statements, uh, money, um, uh, mga if, if statements, uh, switch cases. And then we have loop statements and then our jump statements. So let's proceed with our first uh, control statement, which is the decision-making statement. So here we have an if statement, which is used to evaluate a condition, okay? And then inside our if statements, natay upat ka category, which is the simple if lang, which handles one condition. It either does something or nothing, okay? So kunin siya ang syntax niya. If, and then open and close parenthesis, you're going to put your condition, and then curly brackets, that's your a block of codes or your statements inside that condition. So let's go over to our IDE. Okay. So when we say if, open and close parenthesis, we're going to put our condition here. Diba? Nga niya tong state, uh, niya tong syntax. Condition. And then inside the, inside the if statement or if block, na yung mga statements na to. Now, what are those kinds of conditions that we can put you can think of. Let's say, for example, we have a uh, boolean of is connected. Plus two, two. So let's say, for example, that our condition is is connected. This one is going to, uh, to, to give a result of true. Okay? Since our boolean variable uh, is connected is also true. So let's say, for example, that if we are connected. Let's say we have access. Say, for example. So if you run this one, after na meet the if ang uh, uh, condition that we have, it will run the code or the set or the, the block of codes inside that if statement. Else, no, if wala, it's not going to do anything. So let's say, for example, this one is false. When we, want, when, when we run this one, nothing. Nothing will happen. It will go over to the next line of code. So let's say uh, we have access. Okay. So since we did not meet the condition that we have in our if statement, it's not going to run this one and proceed to the next line of code that we have, which is access denied. So, the next one we have here is if else statement. So, it handles two conditions. No, It either does the first block of uh, code or the second one. So, let's say, for example, so instead of putting this access denied after the if statement, we can say else and then another set or our block of codes. We can put this access denied inside our else statement. So this means that if we have a value of true in our condition, no, it's going to say, or it's going to run this first block of code. If not, it's going to run the second one that we have, which, are, which is our second uh, condition. So to give it an example, no, same thing lang yapan mo gawa sana. You have true here. So when you run this one, it says you have access. So if your condition is false, sorry, false, it's going to say access is denied. But this, but this one is not limited to Boolean um, data types. We can also make other conditions. Let's say, for example, we have a variable of int, I mean, the data type of int with a variable name of age. And then let's give it 18. Diba? Now, what we want to do, or our condition sa tong program is, if you are uh, greater than or equal to 18, you will have access. If not, di ka access. So in that case, we're going to say age. So mugamit na to sa mga operators that we have earlier, no? uh, is equals to, or greater than or equal to 18. Okay, so money siya, 
ang atong gitawag ganina nga relational operator or katong comparison. Katong less than, uh, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Now, know the difference between greater than and equal to sa greater than lang. Because if we're going to say age is greater than 18, it's only going to uh, to read 19 and above. Okay, dili na na yung ang 18. Whereas we're going to say, if we're going to say greater than or equal to, it will start with 18. Okay, apilog niya ang 18 sa condition. So with that being said, if we have an age of 18, you have access. If you do not have an age of 18, let's say for example, 15 pa ka, it's good to say access is denied or access denied. Okay. The next one we have is if, else, if, ladder. So ang sama siya. Handles three or more conditions. It runs a certain code block based on the condition that we have. So let's say for example, um, our program will have like this. So else if, another condition, then we're going to say that if our age is greater than and is equals or greater than or equal to 13, then we're going to say that um, you need parental guidance. It's just an example lang guys. Else, no, we don't have an access. So again, our program right now is if we if our age is equals to 18 or greater than 18, we will have access. If our age is um greater than 13 or equal to 13, pero di tamo lapas sa 18, no? Then we need parental guidance. Else, if wala na tumamit ang dua ka condition, it will return false and we're going to read this uh, block of codes. So let's run this one. So it says you have access. What if we say um, 15? Ko? When we run this one, it says you need parental guidance. It because, it's because you did not meet this condition, but you met the second, the second condition, which is you are greater than 13, Pero wala ka mula pa sa 18. Else, kung wala yun ka, or you did not meet those two conditions, let's say 12, ni Gran ni Mana, man siyang access denied. Okay. Now, nested if statement contains a conditional statement within a conditional statement. So let's say, for example, um, you are 18. No? Let's say, for example, that our program says, you are 18, you need to be verified. So how are we going to do that? So let's have a Boolean. So for example, a Boolean lang uh, is verified. So nested if. So inside this, inside the first na condition ng if statement, we're going to say that if is verified, wrong spelling, verified, then we're going to say you are this. So, money structure sa nested if. You have an if statement and another if statement inside your conditional statement. Gets ba? So, what, what's, going, that's what, what's going to happen in this if statement is once mamit ni munisya condition, it's going to read this line of code. And once you read, or once you meet this condition, it's going to run this line of codes. So let's give it an example. So when we run this one, since we have an age of 18, plus we are verified, it's going to say you have access and you are verified. Whereas if this one is false, no, let's say for example that this condition is false, at tuta, I mean, nothing, not, nothing's gonna happen. It's because wala tay else ng statement sa toang uh, saka if within our if statement. So let's say else um, we are not verified. 
Okay, so let's run this one. So see, since ningan siya nga, okay, you are 18, pero you're not verified. So, moto nga, ang iyang i-run is you are not verified. So, ingana lang siya ang, ang, ang logic sa if statements. I mean, sa nested if statements. Now, let's go over to uh, switch statement. So, switch statement, uh, it is similar to if statement, but it only checks for equality and only works with string, car, int. Actually, appeal ang enum, ane. but then we're not going to talk about enums. No? So, we're only going to talk about string, car, and int. So, again, it's just like if statement, but it only checks for equality. No? So let's have... Um, let's say, for example, that you are a high school student no? with, a, with, with sections. Let's say, for example, section A, B, and C. So let's have car section. This is equals to A. Now... Ang syntax ni switch is we're going to say switch and then your expression or the variable name that you have. So let's say switch section and then open and curly brackets. Open and curly brackets like this. Put spaces. And then we're going to say case. So in our switch, we have what we call case. So unsa sa maning case sa Tagalog, di ba kaso? Diba? Like, uh, kung, nag, kung nag-hearing pa ka, or like, let's say, for example, mga scenarios, kintahay. Mone siya mga itawag na two cases. So let's say, for example, if you meet case A, then it will run this set of statements or this set of uh, codes. Diba? So let's say case uh, A. Okay, and then sorry, semicolon. And then enter. Then you're going to uh, add a statement. So let's say, for example, S out, you are in case A. So let's add another case. No? Okay. And then let's say case B. Then you are in case B. And so on and so forth. So Always take in mind nga when you are making switch case statements, sulod sa case na to, you're all, you, you really need to put break na statement. So, kung saan man break na statement? Um, it's going to stop a certain block of code. No? So, let's say for example, uh, I, uh, I have a section of A. Sorry. A. I have a section of A. Now, once ma-meet na ko niya nga case, no? So if our section is equals to A, then we're going to run this line of code and then we're going to stop this block is small. So to, 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 to let you see the difference of it, no, let's run this one. So see, we have a section of A. So you are in case A. If we have section B here, let's say B, and when we run this one, you are in case B. Diba? Now, if wala siya break okay? if we don't have break statement there, okay, wait, let's make this A. What will happen is, he run ni niya, and it's also going to run this statement. Okay? See? So, pasabot nga, this block of codes, kanini switch, wala niya stop. Okay? So, it's important to make or to have break statements in every cases that you have. Now, the question is, what if wala diha sa choices or wala diha sa cases na to? No? Say, for example, we have a section of C. What's going to happen here is wala lang. It's because we don't have a case of C. So in that, with that being said, we have what we call default. It means that if the given variable no, is not equal to any of these cases, we are going to read this line of code. So let's say, for example, um, you do not belong to any section. Something like this. Yeah. So here we have a section C. So if we run this one, it's going to say you do not belong to any section. Okay. 
So that is the, the logic of um, switch statements. But also, no, dili lang ni siya ingon ani ang pwede na tumbuhatan with switch uh, switch cases okay, or switch case statements. You can also put if statements here. Diba? After meeting condition A, you can also make a condition and something like this. Diba? Pwede sa dire. It's up to you na. No? You can make uh, if else if statements depending on the program that you want to have. No? So, dili na siya limited sa printing lang mismo. Okay. Next one is um, loop statements. No? This is the second control statement that we have, which is loop statements. So the first one we have here is while loop. So kaning while loop, no? uh, it is used when you want a code block to run repeatedly while a condition is met. Other, in other words, kaning while loop, it's going to check the condition first before running the codes or the block of codes inside an statement. Okay, so let's try that one. Let's go with a very simple um, while loop lang for you to understand. Let's say we have an int counter of five. Okay. And then again, ang syntax na to is while then condition followed by open and close brackets. So let's say, for example, that our condition is if our counter is less than five, we're going to run this block of code. So let's say, um, hello, JavaScript. Okay. So let's say that our counter is um, zero. Let's start with zero. So zero is less than five. So we're going to run this one. And then it's going to look back. Now, mahimo na na siyang one by making an increment. No? Okay. So one is less than five. Mura na po ni siya. And so on and so forth. So let's try this one. Uh, diba? We have five. Hello, Java. Start. Okay. Don't forget to add uh, increments or anything uh, makapabreak sa imang while loop. Uh, depending on the condition that you have. Okay, in this case, a simple while loop lang that we have here. If we are not going to make an increment of this counter, magsigira na siya zero. Hence, it's an infinite loop. Diba? Ito na yung stop kayo kasi mukrash itong computer. <laughs> okay. So it's going to be an infinite, infinite loop since ang atong value ni counter is always zero. So muna ang atong na siya yung butang increment. Yeah. Now, next one that we have here no, is a do while loop statement. So let's say, um, yeah. So ang kanin do while loop is somewhat same lang siya sa while loop. But the thing is, it executes the code first or the, 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 blo uh, the code block before checking the condition. So bali siya, no? So let's say, for example, we have a do condition. Ano, do brackets and then while condition. Something like this. Diba? So what's going to happen is let's say is out in this code first. Something like this. So if our condition, let's say our counter uh, is less than five, let's say no. No, no, no. Uh, let's say that our counter is equals to zero lang. Um, equals to zero. That's it. So, inigran na to, Ana, delete na ni siya mo loop. It's because ang uh, atong condition is true man after nga ma ma how do you say this? Ma run niya first. Wait, wait. It's going to be an infinite loop. Let's say lang na greater siya ni zero. Yan Kaya ito ni siya dapat ma false. So if ang if ang dual loop na to, no? It's going to read the line of codes inside the statement first before checking the condition. So in this case, ang atong counter is uh, let's say greater siya sa zero. 
So it's supposed to be, um, no, no, it's supposed to be, and not false. Diba? So it's going to run first this code before siya mo check sa ihang condition. So mo difference between while and to while loop. Again, ang while loop, check niya una ang condition. And if you meet the condition, no, or if the if the conditions of that while statement is na meet ni mo, then it will run those set of statements within that loop. If not, ang may tabo is i-run niya once ang loop, uh, ang, ang, ang set of codes inside do while before checking the condition. So, muna siya ang defense sa to ha. So, okay. Now, next one here is we have for loop. So, for loop is same, same lang niya sa while loop, but it's more of a compact form and a bit of complicated and is most likely used when we are going to iterate collections in an array. So when we say um, collections, no? I mean, when we say iterate, it means that we are reading all the elements inside the array. So let's give it an example. So our syntax is for, for we have the initialization, initialization followed by the condition and our operation. So, yung nanana ang atong syntax. So, initialization, let's say, for example, int i is equals to zero. And then, let's say that our condition, no, um, i is less than, let's say, five. And then, let's increment it by one. Yes. So, let's make a array. Again, atong ibalik ko si employee names. No? Uh, is equals to uh, let's say for example, ato lang ibutang ang um, values already. So let's say can we have loop, we have Joshua, and let's say Lord something like this, diba? So in our array, we have four. I mean, the size of our array is four. So we have four indexes: zero, one, two, and Three. Now, we want to iterate or we want to read all the employee uh, the, the names inside our array. By doing so, we can use for loop. Okay, so let's say that our size is equals to four, diba? and then we're going to say um, system that out that print. We're going to call the identifier. Okay, and then we're going to put i in here, which means that for this instance, no, our first loop, i is equals to zero. And then we're going to check the condition. So i is less than four, which is true. So it's going to run this code. So we are getting the employee uh, name with an index of zero. So after doing so, the increment siya of one. So this time, our i is equals to one and our i is less than Japan so 4, which is true, then we're going to run this code again, and so on and so forth, until now, this condition is going to be a false, or it will return false. So in this case, let's run this one. So we have Kent, Luke, Joshua, and Lord. Diba? So if ato ni siyang usbon, let's say 3 lang ang yung size, ane, tama na po na siya ni Joshua. Okay? Now to make this dynamic no para dili naka mag uh, change change dere sa imong size sa imong condition we have what we call array length so this function is going to get the length of your size uh, the, the uh, of your array or the size of your array so let's give it an example no um, let's say system employee names that length So we, we are uh, expecting a result of four since ang length aning atong array is four, diba? One, two, three, and four. So let's run this one. So as you can see, we have four. Now, if we're going to add new one, let's say uh, Jeff, like that, it it will become five since five pod ang size or ang length sa toang array. Now, you can use this expression or you can use this code here. 
Yeah. Diba? So, it is now dynamic. So, no matter how many employee names you're going to add in our array, you're going to remove in our array, sakto gini siya sa length niya that you have in your array. Since you are reading the length or you are getting the, the length of your array by this function. Okay? So, again, let's say, let's run this one. So, i-print niya tanan. So, kung ato po na siyang pampangon, if you run na ito na siya, ma-print niya po ng opat. So, you have to remember this one, kaya gamit kini siya sa mga for loops or even mga uh, while loops or do while loops, magamit niya po niya. Okay. Hmm, what else? So, we can, I can also give you another for loop which is usually used lang gini siya for iterating um, an array. So instead of having this complicated loop, no, para lang ma-iterate ni mo ang array ni mo, you can have a for each loop. So a for each loop looks like this. So for, let's say for example, uh, string employee name. So it has to be singular. And then uh, semicolon, I mean, tawag dito, colon. And then we're going to call employee names. Yes. Enjoy names like this. So what will happen here is it's just the same thing as this one. No? So for each employee that we have in our employee names na array, atong store ani nga variable. Diba? So kung atong is yung iran, employee, employee, yeah, la, 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 la. name. Uh, atong is yung e comment out. This, it's just the same thing. Diba? Much easier siya when you are going to iterate. Like if ang imong sole purpose lang yun is to iterate uh, an array. So, muna siya usually ang gamiton when I am going to an iterate an array. Whereas kung kani, medyo taas na kayo. Diba? Pero same logic. So, just a bonus sa inyo. Ha. Okay. So, let's go over to the next one that we have. Jump statement. So money ang ganina, no? So ang ginaw na mo ganina is that uh, ang break statement is used to break the current flow of the program and transfer the control to the next statement outside a loop or switch statement. So sa example na to ganina sa tong switch statement, so if wala ni siyang break na statement, no? It will continue sa the rest of the, the, the codes that we have on that block sa tong switch ganina. Whereas kung butangan na to o break, it will stop there na mismo. Di na siya continue. It will go outside of that uh, the code of blocks. Diba? I mean, block of code, sorry. Now, the next one we have here is continuous statement. So, Kanisha, it does not break the loop, whereas it skips uh, the, the specific part of the loop based on your condition. Okay? So, let's say, for example, um, kani, kani na. So, we are printing this one. Right? Then let's make a condition. So let's say if if uh, i is equals to three, I'll say two long. Then we're going to continue. Okay. So the result here is if ang ato ang i kuno is equals to two, then ato siyang skip. No. So let's say uh run. See. So wala ma-appeal si Joshua. It's because ang ato ang index after looping, no, di ba, ni Agi siya 0, 1, pag abot niya og 2, iya yung gi-continue. Like, iya na skip Sige, wala na siya nga part. And then let's continue to the other loop. So, money siya ang gamit sa continue. Okay. Hope you get it, guys. And then, here, we have 2D, 2D arrays or what we call uh, mga multidimensional arrays. Okay, so a 2D array, it is an array within an array. No? So it basically looks like a table with rows and columns. So same, same regal po niya dito sa atong unang array, pero kanilang rows and columns na niya. So it looks like this. No? So when you are declaring a 2D arrays, no, you can declare it with values or without values. So let's give it an example. 
Mm -hmm. Let's say um, screen users. Uh, and let's say, for example, that we have a an array of users in which we're going to get uh, the username and the password. So new string, and then no, oh, let's put this on an evaluate it. So it's equals to so let's say, for example, this one. Okay, so we have here uh, an array within an array. So kanisha array na niya, sulut pigits array na pwede mga line laing arrays. So man siya yung two D arrays. Okay, so let's say for example, let's uh, have Ken. And, uh, now let's have Ken here. Ken, Ken, one, two, three. Let's have um, Jefferson. Um, Mm -hmm. Say for example, can you see the values? Okay. So as you can see, more a table get an one. No, we have the rows, okay, and we have our columns, okay, vertical. So row one, row two, row three, four, column one, and column two. So mana siya. Now how are we going to access a 2D array? Or how are we going to read a 2D array? So same thing lang yapon sa array, pero madungagan lang kay naailaing uh, bracket. So to give you an example, or to give you an overview, overview on how to access it, it looks like this. No? So mo atong table or our 2D array, array. So let's say for example, we have Jefferson and then her password. And then Kendra, and then your password, uh, username, password, username, password, username, password. So what happened here is, duha na kabuk ang atong indexes. We have an index for the rows, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. No? And then we have our index for the columns, which is 0 and 1. Diba? So if, we're, if we want to get, uh, let's say, for example, we want to get Lourdes, no? we are going to say, that um, we're going to call the identifier to open and close uh, square brackets. And then we're going to say 3 and 0 para makuha na to si Lourdes. So let's give it a try. So in this case, uh, atong kong si Josephine. No? So we're going to say users. Users to open and close brackets. Uh, and then, ang, kolo, ang row ni Josephine is 0, 1, 2. So let's say 2. And ang column ni Josephine is 0. Diba? Index 0. So if we are going to run this one, we're going to get Josephine. So kung atong concept si Lord, you say si Lord, let's say 3 and 1. Since it's in index uh, 3 or in the row index 3 and column index one. So, ano rin siyang i-run, makuha na to si Lord123. So, yun yung nga na siya. And same thing, Japon, when you are going to write no, a value. So, let's say, um, let's say nga itong usbon si Lord123. Let's say, users equals to, um, let's say, Lordes123. So, we're going to get the index nga atong gustong bailuan. Say three and one. So this time when we run this one, delete na niya Lord one two three. Kaya gi overwrite naman nato niya. It became it becomes Lord S one two three, de ba? So yung nanalo siya ang read and write. Now I'm going to introduce to you the the for loop or uh the nested for loop for this one. Kay um uh, magamit niya when we're also going to iterate using uh nested for loops, no? So let's go for nested for loops. 
So ang nested for loops, it is a for loop statement within a for loop statement. So it looks like this. No? We have a for statement followed by if another for statement inside the first for statement. Okay. So let's give it an example. Let's say for uh, intro is equals to zero. And then atom condition is, let's say, for example, that um, row is less than the hmm, users that length. Then we're going to increment it by one. So tayong yan eh. And then inside this for loop, we're going to make another four for the columns. So let's say four in call is equals to zero. And then call is um, users that row that length. Then call is Okay. So what happens here is Gamata for statement, no, a for loop. So when this condition is met, it's going to run the for loop inside. So let's say, for example, nga we want to iterate, iter uh, iterate all the values within our um, how do you say this? Our uh, array. Okay. So let's say, for example, uh, system out that print, we're going to say users is equals to row equals to call. So our logic any is row is equals to zero, and row is less than the length of uh, the array, which is one, two, three, four. The four, four ang length ni users for this. Um, uh, this it is for this for loop. So kung true ni siya nga condition, hapa siya mo read sa for. So another for nga nasa sud sa for. Okay? And then, we are going to say that our call or column is equals to zero. And if column is less than the array nga sulod sa ato ang array. No? So in this case, we have two columns. One and two. So, muna nga, ang kaning length ani ron is 2. Okay? And then, if that is true, iyang iran ni. So, let's give it a try. So, diba, as you can see, wait, atong butangan og spaces para separate na to siya. Let's do like this. Okay, so as you can see here, no? First, array within R2D array. Sarap man to. So first, uh, array within our, within our 2D array, iyang gi-iterate ang dua ka values sulod anang array. Followed by the next one, the next one, and the next one. So yung nga na, na paggamit sa for loop, uh, sa so, I mean, so nested for loops, uh, when you want to iterate uh, an array. So ang, ang nested for loops is not only used for iterating array lang yapon ha. Daghan niya po na siya gamit actually. For for pero for this example, atun ipakita how to iterate using nested for loops. We can also do that using for uh, nested for each loop. Let's say for example, same ganina. So let's say int uh, int row um, users and then sorry, excuse me. I'm gonna int na string. Sorry, string name user. And then we're going to get the users. Sorry, guys. Wait long, guys. I'm Okay, so sa atong example ganina sa atong for, di ba? So kung atong tanawon atong for for uh, atong um, for each statement, 
here we have the data type and then kung unsa nga identifier ang gusto nimo ibutang sa data type and then we're going to call the um, collection that we have so in that case let's say or say name or let's say user then users say here we're going to say for um I forget okay. password has I think I forgot this one so for each na nested basta kay ingan ni ang ang logic ya po same ya po na tong for uh, tong for each na to ganina in which ato siyang iterate tag sa tag sa and then after this one, we're going to iterate yapon ang ayahang columns. So, yung nga lang yapon nga logic case. Then, the next one that we have here is the methods and functions. So, kanisha, it's very important to know uh, about methods and functions since we want the program to look clean as much as possible. Uh, we want it to, to look na readable siya as much as, what, as much as possible. Okay, if we are not going to use methods within our classes, what will happen is taas kina siya nga line of code, codes. And if I were to be your colleague, and I, if I were to read your code, magisod ko identify or determine which part of the code is for this certain function. So that's why we have what we call methods and functions. So first we have um, methods and functions. So they are used to divide and sort functionalities within a class so that the code will be readable even if it's very long. So we have a syntax here. It's called um, modifiers, tapos return type, method name, and then open and close parentheses, and then curly brackets. And then inside the curly brackets is our statements. So let's give it an example, guys. All right. uh, let's say, for example, that uh, we want a method for addition and subtraction. So let's say static void. Uh, let's call it addition, okay. like this. And if we're going to make a, a another method for subtraction, subtraction, we're going to say static void subtraction like this, diba? So here we have we already have two uh, methods. One is for the functionality nga maka-add numbers. Two is for subtracting numbers. Now, unsa man static? Money siya ang modifiers that we have here. Now, kung ako niyong explain ang static, kaning keyword niya static is a very complex part of Java. Pero for the basics, what would I say is always make a method using static. Okay? Money siya ang pinaka-basic na buhato nun when, when you are going to make a static. Now, the void here is a return type. Ang return type, ani is actually pwede ni siyang void, pwede ni siyang int, pwede ni siyang string, pwede ni siyang float, depending on unsa ni siyang return type but later on i will explain to you kung unsay mga pwede niyang buhaton using uh, int string and so on and so forth or using the return that we have inside our method okay so for this one let's say for example that we have uh let's say that here is we're going to make a addition diba so let's say um let's declare along let's declare here int int num one int num one equals to one let's say or five or four na lang int num two is equals to five something like this now um conditional variable cannot be called adding a method it's because this is not global. This is called local variable. Now, if you want these other two methods to have access to these numbers, you have to make this variable a global variable. Now, how are you going to make it a global variable? Simple. You're just going to copy that one. Say, put natin siya dire. And then you're just going to, to add static before the data type. Okay. So this time, Kani siya nga mga variables, no, kanin doon ka variable, is now accessible by all methods within this class mismo. Yan na siya. Now, let's say that we want uh, to add um, here. Diba? So let's say 
system that out sorry let's say s out uh, num1 plus num2 and here let's say s out num2 plus num1 so if auto ni siyang iran nothing's gonna happen it's because sa to ang main method wala pa na to gi gi call ni siya nga method di ba now how are we going to call this method simple it's just going to say we're just going to call the name or the identifier of the method or the method name and then followed by a semicolon same thing subtraction okay. di ba Okay, sorry, this is supposed to be minus. So let's run this one. So here we have uh, four plus five is equals to nine. So you can see here nine. And then here we have num one uh, minus, minus uh, num two minus num one. So five minus four, uh, four is equals to one. Now, pwede ni siyang ayon ani on. Like imagine you have a lot of functions within your program. So to separate those functionalities, come ani mo na lang siya og method and just just call it over here para mas dali siya tanawon or mas dali siya ma-recognize or makita sa mga sa mga let's say for example you are making a system for your defense, di ba? So ang panel nga mag-defense mo ha, they can easily read your code just by simply looking at those methods na oh, okay, so this method is simply for this kind of function in his program nga ni nga na so nga na ang ang logic sa method now inside the method we also have what we call uh parameters or arguments so unsa na siyang parameters or arguments it's just like a local variable inside that uh, method so let's say for example that we have a um let's just toshin siya ko ano kay this one. So let's say, for example, in our addition method, it is asking a parameter of int num and another parameter it of int num2. Say num1 and num1 and num2. Before doing the said um, line of codes that you want. No? So let's say num1 plus num2. More than an example. So if atong buhaton, if if we were to call this method by you uh, by doing what we did earlier, ang may tabuan na it's going to be an error. It's because this method is asking for a parameter or is asking for an argument in which you are required to pass an argument, diba? So so for for in 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 this instance we have int num one and int num two. So let's pass let's say uh four and five. So if we are going to run this one, muna nga natay result nga 4 and 5. Let's say for example, uh, 10. If we run this one, 10 plus 5 is 15. So yung anana ra siya ang, ang method calling. No? It's it's very useful yun. No? Especially kung tag-as na gagayo ang inyong code. So that's it. Okay. So, muna siya ang ganina na ang explain ninyo ang variable scoping. So, ang global variables is declared within the class and it can be accessed by the whole class. No? Bisag kinsa pa na nga method ang mugamit na pwede na niya gamitan because it is declared globally. The next one is what uh, is local variable. No? The one nga we had inside our method. No? Or the one that we have, let's say for example, um, Let's say, for example, I have a string name is equals to Morris. And inside our for uh, inside our if statement, ano, let's say, for example, um, yeah, if statement na lang. Let's say for inside our if statement, na atay, um, Okay, so let's say for example nga natay int nga declare na to dire. Uh, let's say int num num3 
is equals to 5. So, kung ato ni siyang i-print ang name, na no, say print ato ni name, bugana na siya. Diba? Bugana na siya. Pero kung atong i-print si num3, it's going to be an error. It's because this variable is declared locally anilang nga statement. Same goes with sa mga for loop, sa mga while loop, sa mga do while loop. If you are going to uh, declare a variable inside his code block, no? let's say for example, while loop ni siya, you're declaring a local variable within that block of codes. Add to na siya ni mo magamit. You cannot use it outside of that block of codes. Okay? So again, ang pag-declare o global is something like this. Starting in uh, global number. So, kani siya ng variable is what we call global. So, magamit na siya anywhere inside the class. So, mana siya guys. Now, earlier, no, sa tuwang if statements, um, kung napansin ninyo, we are only making conditions using int numbers or uh, mga integral data types. It's because when it comes to string, it's different when we're going to make a condition from it. So let's say, for example, we have a string name here, which is equals to Morris. No? And then if we're going to say equals Morris, actually, what will happen here is it's going to, to read the value and not the content of name. So let's say, for example, uh, sorry. Na. So, kana siya, muran niya po na siya. Pero, what will happen is, if ang imuhang conditioning statements for string is always like this, pag abot o pila ka, let's say for example, you have pila ka if, else if statements, mabuang na ang memory location or lo, memory locator ni, uh, ni Java. So, what we usually use for um, string is we're going to say equals and then we're going to say uh, equals to name. Um, let's say Morris. Like that. So, kanisya nga function is used when you are going to make conditions nga uh, same sa if na statement. So, here, if our name is equals to Morris, then we're going to we're going to print Java start. So, nigrana na, print na siya Java start. Also, we have what we call uh, equals ignore case. So this one, even if mag dire, even if ato siya yung uh, mo no? Sorry for the word. So ibutang na ito na siya yung yana. Marid ya pa na niya. No? So pwede na siyang yung yana. Also, pwede sa ito magamit og scanner. Let's say wala na eh. Okay, so let's say uh, uh, enter your name. Something like this. And then we're going to say name is equals to user input that next line. Okay. Uh, now, to compare this one, pwede rin sa di mo nga, ang imong isod within this equals ignore case ng function is the variable mismo. So in this case, wait, atong gam an o else statement. So else um, print incorrect. Okay. So, kung ato ni siyang i-run, say for example, kung kung ano yung line. Say for example, we input uh, Dave. Sorry. Name is equals to Hindi, oh, hindi na siya. Okay. So if let's say for example, eh, ba? Atong kaon ang ang user input. Sorry. Atong kaon ang user input. So let's say for example, mabutang tadi og uh, Morris, manang murungin siya correct. Pero if ang ato ang user input is not equals sa Morris, let's say else, mabutang na siya incorrect dapat ya. Incorrect. So something like that. Also, you can do 
uh, you can do like this. Um, no, no, no. I'm going to do this one. Masabot aning exclamation point is not. So let's say for example, uh, name that equals ignore case is not equals to Maurice. Then it's going to say correct. Else, it's going to say incorrect. So ito ang balihon. So let's say Dave, may na siya correct. It's because dili man siya equals sa atong ibutang dere nga string which is Maurice. So anything, any condition nga imong ibutang sa sa if statement ni mo, when you put exclamation point ana, it's going to be the opposite of whatever condition that you are or that you have in your if statement. Same goes with the do while loop, uh, the, the, the for loop, the, the while loop, and the switch cases. Ah, no, ang switch cases is for equality. Rin mo to siya, diba? So, yung ana rin na siya sa when it comes to string. So, for now, I think. Ang pinaka last na ko nga mahatag ninyo is ang bonus no which is ang method overloading. So kanisha the reason why I added method overloading it's because based on experience no um companies will ask you which um or what programming language are you most comfortable in. And if you are going to say that you're most comfortable in is Java, most likely this question is going to be asked by the interviewer. So, okay, so let's say uh, you are really comfortable with Java. So, what have you encountered uh, method overloading? What is method overloading? How does it work? Something like that. So, when we say method overloading, you can use the same name, no, or use, you can use the same method name, but different in parameters so that you will be able to cater every possibility of that method. So, let's say, for example, um, Say addition. Say for addition, we want nga kanisya nga method sa addition mangayos siya o tulo tulo ka number. That's possible. See, as you can see, wala siya mo error. It's because kanisya nga nga method only or has only two parameters in it. Whereas kanisya nga method na siya tulo tulo ka nga parameters. So, pwede na ito na siya makakol o kasa tagsa. So, let's say, for example, addition. so, since kanina siya nga addition, um, possible nga pwede tulo, pwede duha, we can say 3 and 5. And it's going to run this method. Pero kung ito na po siyang usbon, let's say tulo siya, since naan na siya nga possibility, it's going to run this method this time. Delete na ang kanin na method. So that is a simple uh, example of what method overloading is. So basically, pwede ni siya magamit as well when you're going to get a square root of a float, diba? a square root of a double, square root of an in, so on and so forth. So pwede ni mo na siya pang kwaon or pwede ni mo siyang gamitin ng method overloading. So that's it for our... Java start session, guys. Uh, I hope na may mga na learn, no. Even though those are basic ones lang, no. Uh, I've seen some of the the participants have already gone through the basics of Java, even made their own GUIs na mga OOPs. Pero uh, I hope you still learn from it. Kay some of, siguro some of you or masin nako before, I already know how to code this certain line of codes and so on and so forth. But when it comes to understanding it, maglisod ko before, de ba? Like lahi ra when you understand the fundamentals or the the the, the foundation yes, of Java, rather than code code lang kanda because you've seen it on YouTube, you've seen it on Stack Overflow, de ba? You really you know what the logic is, pero the certain parts of those basic functions, have you understand those things, de ba? Mga yana na mga 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 botang so. I hope you understand something and that's it. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Kuyamao, for your time and effort to be with us here today. And I will just read some of the questions for, from the participants. 
first for aspiring application developers what are the expected skill set and technologies to learn in the next two years for companies that endorse java development sorry 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 yes i'll repeat for aspiring application developers what are the expected skill set and techs to learn in the next two years for companies that endorse java development skill sets um most likely good no you need to learn more on uh object oriented programmings uh you need to learn more on making apis using java applications no applicable as lahat sila tanan using java programming it's because kung imong tanawan or for us for us students no in crystal college we are used to in making java guis java consoles diba uh and our oop we are using python diba in java my god it's not just a desktop application that you can make you can also make web applications using java diba so very important para sa wa very important ang um, uh, 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 a person who understands how oop really works so oop is a very wide range of uh how should they how they say this part of java java programming so i think mona ja yes yes and for someone who asked if they can get the presentation the powerpoint presentation mm -hmm. i think we provided in the chat so kindly check and also someone asked if is it safe to use system that out that print f function in displaying or is there any better approach in terms of displaying different data types in one setting in one setting well ang um, print f mongod is when you are going to print along with a formula diba so if i were to ask if you really want to make it dynamic no like usually when you are making big projects even if dili lang about java we always go for dynamic uh, mga data types dynamic approach so i think printf is dili kayo siya recommended since once you use printf for me lang ha for me naka set nam na siya so let's say for example sa imong printf you are making or you are you are having this formula so ato to siya taman whereas if you are going to make a function with sets of formulas and you're just going to call it out when you are using your print so makapili pa ka so bali dynamic ang imong mga formulas that you have in your program something like that yes and what type of projects can i apply what type of projects can i apply in java a lot there's a lot pwede kang uh, say for example uh, the one i made before uh, i made a bus ticketing uh, system i also made uh, a complex hotel reservation in which mo send pud siya og sms sms um Actually, anything that you can think of is almost possible when it comes to Java. Good. Any any projects that you can think of, ready siya sa Java. As long as you, malagito. As long as you know the fundamentals, you know how OOP works and so on and so forth. You, you can you can do any projects of your uh, of your choice. And for the next question, what is your mostly used programming language? Ah uh, okay. So mostly used programming language based on experience now no. Uh I would say JavaScript. Because throughout my IT career as a student as karon nga in graduate na and as well as who was an intern of uh, Sir Marbs before. We made use of React JS, Node.js, JavaScript itself mismo. And we also made use of uh, Yito frameworks, mga nga na, 
I'm the kind of guy who doesn't like PHP. To be honest, I don't like PHP. So I would say JavaScript is the mostly used na kong programming language. And for the last question, is Java difficult? Um, to be honest, when we say difficulty, it's subjective. Now, like, siguro for you, it's difficult because you haven't tried uh, to understand what you're doing. Or, or some, for some, pwede siya nga difficult siya. It's because bisan saan nilag try, maglisod lang yun sila. Diba? So if I were to ask kung lisod ba ang Java, I would say no. It's because if you really want, if, if, if there's something that you really want to do, pangitaan, hindi mo siyang paagi. Even if magkalisod ka, you will always try to find a solution on that problem that you have. So difficulty is just a matter of um, mind control or, or mind setting. So kumpara niyo, imo imo iset imo mind niya. Ah, lisod ta eh. Ah, lisod ko an. Probably you won't move on, diba? Wala kay mabuhat. So that's that's it for me. And for the last question, if mo send mo through email sa video recording, yes. We are going to send the video recording to email. And that's it. Thank you so much, Kuya Mao. Thank you. And also, don't forget to follow Mr. Mauris at LinkedIn and Instagram. You can check it in the chat for the links. And Hannah? And also, we would like to present this certificate for Mr. Maurice Vincent Mijos for being a speaker at the event of Google Developer Student Club's Crystal College entitled Java Start version 2.0, held in the 10th month of December year 2022. Thank you so much because we surely learned so much today. Again, you may follow Maurice on LinkedIn and Instagram. Thank you so much for attending this event on behalf of the whole GDSC. CEC, we are grateful for your presence today. Don't forget to follow GDSCEC in, in the link provided in the chat box. And before we officially leave the meeting, let's take a quick photo opportunity. So kindly open your cameras, everyone. There, thank you so much, everyone. The certificates will be emailed you so, to you, so make sure that you filled up the attendance form. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending this Java Start version 2.0 event. Thank you, and have a great day.